Here's some of the stories trending this week at NASA. NASA conducted the latest successful test of the Orion spacecraft's parachute system on March 8th in the skies above the U.S. Army's Yuma Proving Ground in Arizona. The test was designed to evaluate the parachute's performance in an emergency abort situation that would require Orion to be jettisoned from the agency's Space Launch System rocket during the launch. Even at this relatively low altitude, the parachutes are designed to fully deploy and safely return Orion and its crew to Earth. NASA's Associate Administrator for Aeronautics Research, Jay Wan Shin, was recently honored by Aviation Week with its prestigious Innovation Laureate for 2017. Shin has directed the agency's team of aeronautical innovators since 2008. The publication recognized him for his efforts focusing the agency's research around long-range strategies such as NASA's environmentally responsible aviation and other programs aimed at meeting the global challenges facing aviation during the years ahead. Members of the media were invited to see Orbital ATK's Cygnus spacecraft March 9th at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The Cygnus, which has been dedicated to late NASA astronaut and U.S. Senator John Glenn, is targeted to launch from nearby Cape Canaveral Air Force Station on a resupply mission to the International Space Station. The cargo Cygnus will carry includes 38 CubeSats, studies on plant physiology, growing fresh food in space, and an investigation to increase the effectiveness and decrease the side effects of chemotherapy treatment. On March 8th, NASA announced the selection of 133 proposals from U.S. companies under Phase 2 of the agency's Small Business Innovation Research Program to develop technologies for space exploration, aeronautics, science, and human exploration and operations. Phase 2 projects expand on results of recently completed Phase 1 projects. NASA's SBIR program is a competitive awards-based program that encourages American small businesses to engage in federal research, development, and commercialization. Engineers at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory are preparing the agency's Deep Space Atomic Clock for a year-long technology demonstration mission to validate a miniaturized, ultra-precise mercury-ion atomic clock. It uses precise radio frequency technology to determine position and is orders of magnitude more stable than today's best navigation clocks. This technology is vital to the success of a range of deep space exploration missions. The payload is scheduled for launch into Earth orbit in September 2017. In celebration of International Women's Day and Women's History Month, NASA unveiled an educational virtual tour on March 8th. The Modern Figures Tour, available via the free Google Expeditions mobile app, takes students inside the careers of seven women at NASA who work in science, technology, engineering, and math fields. The tour, which builds on NASA's participation with the 20th Century Fox film Hidden Figures, is the first NASA-themed career tour available as part of Google Expeditions. In recognition of National Engineering Month, NASA Aeronautics sponsored a night of flight event at Amadon Bowen Elementary School in Washington. Students were honored as NASA Aero Junior Ambassadors for planning and creating STEM-related activities. The event, which was inspired by the Museum in a Box series, was designed to help students understand the physical science of flight and encourage them to pursue STEM-related careers. And that's what's up this week at NASA. For more on these and other stories, follow us on social media and visit www.nasa.gov/twan.